Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're excited to have our guest, Tim Kilduff, Mr. Hopkinton Man About Town. That's how yeah. I think about you. We're excited to have you here. You've got so many interesting things that you're always involved in and doing, well, and we're going to hear about them. I think it's pretty busy this time of year. Yeah. It gets, a, it gets a little crazy, but you know, but first of all, I hope, I hope people appreciate what the three of you do. Oh, thank because you. Because yeah. this is, the, you know, you're showing a tremendous initiative. And you know, we can, we can disagree on issues, but the fact <laughs> of the matter is peop, people ought to, be, ought to be thanking the three of you for uh, starting the program and doing what you do on a continuing basis. So thank well, you. Thank that, you. That's, that's very sweet. It's fun. Uh, you know, uh, you know it's, it's, it's very much a collaborative that, you know, and it's kind of a labor of love. I mean, it's not our day jobs. <laughs> And we are friends and love Hopkinton. We've all lived here a long time. Well, and, and we hope that we embrace the diversity of thought in our town. Um, there's so many wonderful things to celebrate that I think we have more in common than we do in our differences. And you know, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think that's really. One exactly. of our major themes is finding what's common and, and embracing and celebrating this town. It's, it's a lot of fun. And providing that platform. I mean, yeah. I like to say, you know, we, we love it here and we just are through the Facebook page, now through the website, through this show, just providing a platform for people to get together to talk yeah. and, you know, not pushing any particular agenda, um, but just being involved and, and caring. Well, keep creating the platform. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Well, and I but think accolades go backwards to you, too. Yeah. I think you have been, how many years have you yeah, been Yeah, tell us town? your story, because yeah. <laughs> you've been here a long time. You know, uh, the family moved into, t into Hopkinton in the mid-70s. What? Wow. The town was 6,000 people. Oh, my word. You lived here, you, you were, came yeah. here then? Yeah. Yeah. And I, re wow. I remember distinctly around the holidays, driving up 135, the snow was falling, the gazebo was lit, yeah. and it, it was like, it was it. The old it gazebo. We had the old gazebo. Oh, yeah. yeah. The old, it was an old gazebo. And so the, and, and I think you're right about this, sort of this, we have more in common than, than we do differences. Yeah. But there's, there's, you talk about this change all the time. There's been an immense amount of change. It, I mean, it, well, that's the only thing. That I, I think we're in life change <laughs> and death and taxes. So well, we've, sorry. We've, I mean, definitely we've seen a population growth and knowing that I've grown up in the area too, and that the diversity and the demographics have definitely changed a great deal too in this area. And I think you play a large role in a lot of the diversity that happens here. With, I mean, with the twenty six point, I don't the twenty six point two foundation. He's the founder. He's going to be leading the way for, for the um, Marathon Museum, yeah. but wow. also doing a lot on inclusion, Whether and I think I'd like you to talk a lot about what you're actually planning now at the middle school with Greece. You know, it's really fascinating, this inclusion, that's a, that's a big issue. When mm -hmm. the, the 26.2 found, uh, Foundation was, was formed in, I think, 1996, around mm -hmm. the 100th Marathon, mm -hmm. and it, we had that title, that's what we called mm -hmm. ourselves. A few years after that, we began to realize that Hopkinton is in a unique position, uh, and, and we started to reach out and develop relations in, in Greece. And I remember in, when you went over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. In particularly Marathon Greece, that then led to uh, to uh, connections in China, Sham in China. Wow. Uh, and it's, I just woke up to this fact that uh, we have five marathoners. Uh, these are professional people. Mm -hmm. uh, five marathon founders from China that are running in this year's race oh, and wow. they'll be connected to Hopkinton. Yeah, wow. and that, that was, um, some things that have come up the last couple of days are ways that those um, runners are actually going to be featured in different mm -hmm. community activities. You know, you talk about diversity. I had no idea the, the number of, uh, I guess you'd call them Chinese Americans that live Chinese in Hopkinton. Chinese Ameri yeah. Asian Americans Asian and Asian Indian Americans. Mm -hmm. I mean, this past, we're going to the, the you know, um, the library groundbreaking and the um, one of the donors to the library before the holidays was 50 
Asian Chinese families in town that pull together, they have their own heritage club mm -hmm. and donate sixty five hundred dollars to the library. Nobody even knew they existed. Wow. No. No. I mean, we knew there were Asian families in town and right. I have a friend who has a second grader and a third gr grader, so two different schools and she showed me their class list and the names oh. are no longer Wright and Siebert and Hayward and Hayes. <laughs> they these were the the makeup was I, I'd say almost more than half was Asians and so Indian Americans, which is, diversity yeah, so the demographic has changed. Yeah. yeah. Well, it has. So take a but minute to for Right now you're know. about to promote this event at the middle school. So I well, thought that hold was on, I was just going to ask, just say a word about the 26.2 Foundation, like what its purpose and just sure. for people who, who don't know, just for a little grounding. We started because we, there were some of us that understood Hopkinton's role and its position in the Boston Marathon. Mm -hmm. And the, the race didn't originally start here, as you know, it started in the Nashland, but it was moved here okay. in, in 1924. Oh. But the Brown family, jo George V. Brown, and yeah. there's a sculpture of George V. Brown <laughs> at the starting line. Everyone has to go like this yeah. in the <laughs> That's a whole other story. And, uh, and Walter Brown, his mm -hmm. son, at one point the Brown family had uh, ownership essentially yeah. in the in the Boston Garden, the Boston Bruins, and the Boston Celtics. Mm. That was a Hopkinton that was a Hopkinton connection. Sure. Both okay. George V. Brown and Walter Brown are in the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, Canada, because they were credited with developing the sport of hockey union in the United States. Wow. And I mean at BU so, there's the Walter Brown Arena. Yes. And okay. Has, am I correct that since I can't remember when a relative of the Brown family has started the marathon. You're right. So, you know, since I don't know whenever. So that's why the statue with the starter pistol, because there's always he used to start the the marathon, and then his family has continued the legacy. And there's a, a Brown family member that starts uh, the marathon every year. So the 26.2 Foundation, some roots here in Hopkinton. Does it raise money, and what does it do? Ultimately, it will. We we you. You use the word platform mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. when we started. We we're able to use the marathon mm -hmm. beyond Boston. The marathon as a platform to do a number of things. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, ultimately, we believe that a uh, international marathon center mm -hmm. should be built. It doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Nope. Mm -hmm. We happen to think it ought to be built in Hopkinton. So we're starting this process, and oh we're not God. talking about uh, a storefront with 25 no. pairs of Shoes. Yeah, You want something that's actually featuring marathons around the world, too, which I think that's what people have to grasp. Because people have said to me, like, how can we have a museum just on the Boston Marathon? I said, no, it's bigger than that. It's the Marathon, marathon. Museum. So it takes Greece, it takes New York, it takes Chicago, it takes mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. So the, the, numbers, the numbers in, uh, of, of, of people participating in marathons, particularly half marathons, are huge. just, they're yeah. huge. Yeah. And it's very interesting that the biggest percentage of growth happens to lie with females, particularly in the ah, half marathon. The, okay. the numbers are going through the roof. This is, a, this is more than a billion dollar industry. So mm. as a, as a, it's not just a marathon museum then. No. It will be, you know, what's the vision and what are you thinking? Yeah. If, if, you look at, if you look at the marathon run and you step back and realize its origins, it started really uh, in, with the Battle of Marathon yep. in mm. 490 BC. Nike. Mm -hmm. The Persians were trying to take over the world. They came to, they wanted to, uh, they wanted to uh, take over Athens. There was a battle fought on the plains of Marathon, Greece, which is approximately mm. 26 miles outside of Athens. Okay. The, the, the Athenians won, but the, the key point is during that period is when the democratic form of government, so right. to speak, was developing. Mm -hmm. So the argument is if the, the, if the Athenians had not won, we wouldn't have democracy. We wouldn't, and, it, and minimally it would have been pushed off hundreds well, of years. And, right. and the marathon, the messenger ran from the Plains of Marathon to Athens to deliver to the sitting um, government mm -hmm. that they had won the victory. And so that so was, there's a, that's the run. Yeah, and, and so Nike means victory, and he ran and said There you go. And victory. in 18, uh, 1896, mm -hmm. they established the first uh, modern Olympics. Yep. There were members of the Boston Athletic Association there. In fact, mm. there were athletes that participated in that Olympics. They instituted a long distance run. They'd never have one. The, the yeah. original Olympics, the ancient Olympics, didn't have long distance races. Okay. So where do we start this thing from? Somebody said, we'll start it at Marathon. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
they ran it. The BAA people were there. They said, this is really interesting. Next year, they started the Boston Marathon. Wow. And this is the oldest continuous marathon in the say, world. Yeah, and it started and right up at the Pleasant Street corner there, right at and Quarterville. And it is the first marathon for the U.S. too. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. yeah. We it's were well, the first marathon ever. I get chills. Just, I know. I've lived here 18 years. I've been coming to the marathon for 18 years, and I still get chills. Yeah, we, get chills. So we just randomly happened upon this town coming from Minneapolis, and, you know, just, you know, it's just the rich culture and history yeah. around this is so unbelievable. Th what we need to do is what the three of you do all the time, is you <laughs> continue to promote, you continue to talk, Yeah. but this, this International Marathon Center is a probably a twenty-five to thirty million dollar. Absolutely, and you've already located you a site it for be? it, right? It'd be up by Legacy. Like well, that. that's a good question. Because I mean, I know, I know on, your, <laughs> on your website it shows the Legacy Land. Yeah. Okay, so, so tell us. As you all know, this property on one thirty-five. Yes. It's less than a mile from the starting line. Right. Uh, it'll be. Uh, we're looking at the possibilities of building it on the land, which Legacy Farms will donate, mm -hmm. will transfer mm -hmm. to the town. Mm -hmm. It's an ideal location, mm -hmm. and it's ideal because we can then create athletic fields. Yep. We can tie it into a trail system. Oh. This is a pretty big deal. Oh, yeah. Now, it, yeah. It, it, and also, we should let people know we're not looking for town meeting to fund this. No, no, no. this would this be is privately funded. This would be yeah. totally external. Yeah. Huge sponsorships. You know, not at all. You know, town. Yeah. No. No. We but do other to the benefit of the town, though. Right. Yes. Yeah. And we do other things. Uh, there, there are two other sculptures in town. Uh, this year is the 70th anniversary of Stellianos Karakidis, a yes. Greek marathoner mm -hmm. who won the Boston Marathon. That's right. There's a sculpture of, of uh, Karakidis at the w one mile mark in Hopkinton. Right. Is it Weston? It oh, is. Right. It's right, right at Weston. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The, uh, does it have a flame? No, that's, that's another point. That's another that. point. I'm like, where okay. is that? I, I've got the, I remember little bits and pieces. The, <laughs> the, the Hoyts. There's yes. a, the Hoyt yeah. sculpture in front of Center School. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, these are who I think you were with me when we put our hands on the Fly for Hope last year. We did. Uh -huh. And so we did that together. And then now the Hoyts have been chosen as being one of the stars on Fly for Hope. Yeah. And along with, you know, some... You get it. You, you know, get this. It. You get and it. And the Fly for Hope, I mean, has been going around the country, but they're, they're, they've chose 50 individuals who have made impact in the community, whether they've been military, heroes, um, right, sir. And, and the Hoyts are one of them. Yeah. Eventually, this Fly for Hope ends up at the Smithsonian, and if they put, if someone hits a button near where Tim or I put our hands, our picture comes up with oh, our name. Cool. But the 50 stars are very unique. So the Hoyts started off as the blue background, like Tim and I, and stuff like that, when they asked a bunch of us to come out for this. And, you know, wow. now it's, it was so on Chronicle the, Hoyts, the other night. The Hoyt statue. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, these are uh, I don't think people quite appreciate the fact that those sculptures, they're probably, they're probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars. They're yeah. incredible. Yeah. These are these are substantial pieces Fine of art. art. Fine art, amazing. Uh, you mentioned the the flame. Yeah. In two thousand ten, it was the two thousand five hundredth anniversary right. of the Battle of Marathon. They created a marathon flame similar to the Olympic flame. Right. It uh, it it was originated in Marathon Greece. That flame was carried to Hopkinton. Just like the Olympic flame gets yes. carried around. Mm -hmm. And it. We, uh, we built a, 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 a little a, a, a lantern, in fr which has been lit since then, since yeah. 2010, and it burns in front of the, in front of the uh, Hopkins Police Station. It's That's the only place it in the world, the only place in the world where the flame is kept, where that flame is kept alive. Even in Marathon Greece, they extinguish it and then redo it. Do it well, well, mind, There's a flame in front of the police station yes. that is lit 24/7. Yep. Yeah. I had no idea. That, that's part of the, it, it, part, was, yeah. it was the marathon, which, correct me if I'm wrong, every Olympic starts with a flame right. lit marathon and it's carried around the world and then the torch of the opening ceremonies yeah. at wherever in the world the marathon is, that's that last bit and the flame gets lit and that's how the Olympics start. So essentially, we, do something that, like we that, yeah. had that mm -hmm. flame and ours now stays lit. Pretty cool. It's very, very cool. cool. Very cool. Very cool. And, and so, now, as you're like, the, you've really grasped into a lot of the education right. process. And I mean, now what you're launching at the middle school, um, I know Mr. Rockwood is one of the teachers doing it. Um, Unbelievable. And so um, it is basically embracing kind of the whole battle of the marathon, the Greece democracy, 
and built and um, be presented by hosted by the 26.2 Foundation is helping enable this, and it's become a middle school platform for um, their history department. Is this new this year, or tell yes. us about how this, this is? Yeah. Uh, this originated uh, after the 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 unfortunate bombings of 2013. Yes, Deb Pinto and Chuck Rockwood. In, in a, mm -hmm. there are about 10 middle school teachers that created a program called Desire to Inspire. Yes. Mm -hmm. They right. use the marathon as a platform to teach in various subject areas, including history, mm -hmm. math, science. Mm. The te th this group of teachers meets every other Friday at 6.15 in the morning. Oh, they are Dedication. doing something, and, and I know it, people tease me about this. There is nothing like this that we are aware of in the world where you have educators that are dedicated like that that are using the, the, the marathon, the connection. What they've been able to do now is to transfer this desire to inspire theme mm -hmm. to kids who are never going to run the marathon. Right. But their program last year was dedicate 26.2 hours to reading books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 in but embedding that 26.2. The concept yeah, of the concept, ins yeah. inspiring people to do to whatever. To stretch. Yeah. The, the challenge then it hap the, the challenge develops when we try to, we've got to find a way to take what's going on and get it out to the world. Right. That's, that's the next phase of this. Okay, mm -hmm. we're doing great. It's like everything else. Again, like the stuff that you talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. There's great things happening in Hopkinton. And we talk to ourselves. We need now right. to talk to get the world. Out to well, the anything world. we can do, and, and we'll talk offline, of course, but anything we can do and through our various platforms to make more visible some yeah. of these activities and some of these things. I mean, we're all about it. And I know you have to work very closely with the BAA. And yes. And I, I think one of the neat things is that the BAA has actually invested more into Hopkinton recently. They bought one ash street. And so oh. now that, you know, they are now property owners in Hopkinton. They're vested in here. This, I'm going to tell you now, the marathon's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really fascinating about that is that they now will have an interest and any kind of plans that take place oh, in downtown Hopkinton. <laughs> 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 well, that's well, our and, favorite and, standing place. I hope they still let us. I, I'm glad they did it. Um, I do believe, though, that the you know HAA and the 26.2 yeah. um, will always. I mean, there's there's always a push pull between the VAA and. But I, I, I think this will create better alignment, hopefully, um, as, as things like the Marathon Center develops and, and all those good things happen. You're, you're, you're right. You're right to bring that up, too. Back in uh, 1982, there was a big ruckus around the marathon when it was moving from sort of this amateur status to professional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the marathon was almost sold. Uh, there were three mm. people in Hopkinton that got involved in stabilizing the event. Tom Brown, who was the postmaster, mm -hmm. uh, Harold Rathburn, and uh, I had the privilege of working with them. I was the race director in 83 and 84, unpaid, by the way. Oh, of course. So show how smart I was. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a paid position. And what we were able to do was stabilize the event. But Hopkinton, again, had a strong hand in that. But in terms of the synergy with the, with the BAA, I, I can honestly say, and I'm, I'm a, I've maintained my membership, mm -hmm. I have never gone to them with an idea and been turned down. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they, they sometimes don't get the credit that they deserve. They've been right. able to keep mm -hmm. this thing going. But the synergy and the closeness. Uh, and really, they have embraced sponsors that have stayed with them. I mean, John Hancock mm -hmm. has been with Huge. the marathon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that it's just not even a question. You know, it comes around, yeah, we're in. Yeah. You know, it's, they sign a decade-long yeah. agreement at a time. Yeah. You know, and you, you, you've all heard this. Every so often, it comes marathon time, and you hear a few people grumble. Uh, you know, that we're inconvenienced that day. Oh. And, you know, I have, I have, I have a hard time suppressing uh, <laughs> what I'd really like to say, because you <laughs> all have had experience where we travel. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Well, I'm from Hopkin. Oh, I know where that is. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Knows. knows. Or if they don't, I you just say the marathon. Yeah. Oh yeah. my word. Yep. Yeah. So we need to be. We, you know, and we we need it's to be neat cheerleaders right now too. Oh, you know, yeah. we're we're about a month out from the marathon, and you know, every Sunday you see the training runs going on. Oh, last yeah. last week, Muriel Kramer and I went out to um, visit Mary Pratt and Natick, 
and as you're going along, it was like training and runner after running. training runner after training runner. And you knew they're training runners because they had their jackets on from last year. Exactly. Yeah. Stuff like, or they had to their jersey. Road. You know, the road, just I, every day. I, well, I can't resist. Mary, Mary Pratt tells the story. She remembers when Walter Brown, Tom Brown, Joe Pratt were sitting in her living room. And Walter was asking his Hopkinton buddies what they thought about um, Walter hiring, recruiting, hiring uh, a black basketball player to play for the Celtics. Oh, mm. wow. And he asked, he asked his buddies what, he, what they thought about that. That player was Bill Russell. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, really? And wow. Mary remembers that. I, it, I hope she's doing well. <laughs> yeah. Her wit and feistiness is all there. <laughs> and stuff so, like that. It's I mean, amazing. amazing. You've been at the, involved in this since, the, since your beginnings here in town, it, it sounds like. I yeah, I, I, you know, we started, uh, the, the, the first marathon committee was established in uh, 1980. God, it seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah. And it was, <laughs> it was, a, it was established because uh, there weren't enough porta johns, and even with six thousand runners, there right, weren't enough. Right. So the, time, the, it w the committee was established to protect Hopkinton's interests. Yeah. Uh, and we we really did that. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll I'll never forget when Johnny so, Kelly <laughs> ran, ran his fiftieth marathon. This you can't do this anymore. Uh, Davison Welsh, local artist who's mm -hmm. now deceased, uh, uh, Rob Phipps and I marched out to the starting line about fifteen minutes before the gun went off. And all the television stations are there. And Hopkinton presented Johnny Kelly with this antique breadboard painted by Davison Welsh. Yeah. There, there are all these mm -hmm. connections. I can't do that now. Right, 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 right. You know, right. It's a, it's a yeah. So here's well, a I question. remember when just you know bef when you could when anybody could run, they didn't need a bit oh, at the end, and you would have just random and thousands of th you know with thirty thousand runners. Yeah. yeah. So have you ever run it? Yes. Oh, that's you awesome. Have. Okay. I did. Um, a long time ago, but yes. So what year did you run it? Uh, uh, Do you remember? Oh, yeah. So are you okay. still a runner, jogger? 1896. Jogger. Just start, right. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I've made in my life is letting that fall off. So I got motivated recently, and I, so I started running, and I decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna run. I'm going to try a half marathon, which I did. Oh, good. Which I did two weeks ago. And, no and way. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. Um, snaps for Tim. I exactly. finished. I finished. We, we, yeah. we, 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 I know you have a son who got married this past fall. Do yes. you have any other children? Yes. Uh, uh, Christy's the oldest, uh, lives in, uh, in Apex, which is Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Kim uh, is in Worcester. Mm -hmm. Kim works for something called One Mission, yeah. which is a nonprofit organization that raises funds for families who, are, who have kids who are dealing with cancer. Yeah. Wow. And they don't do research. They provide They're services and, and funds. What, you know what it costs families? to drive into Dana-Farber and Park? Yeah, uh, yeah I, for do. Example? Yeah. I do. Well, unfortunately, kind of like the so you, fund for families. <laughs> and though. then your yeah. son, so all three of your kids went to hopping in school system then. Yeah, and then uh, they, they went to high school at, uh, at Marion High School. Okay. I almost went there. <laughs> But yeah. it, wow. it, now they have a bus. Um, did they have a bus back then? No. No. Because no. that was, <laughs> like, that was like the parents' nightmare of like, all right, how do you get your kid there? You want yeah. to go to parochial <laughs> school, but so, so with all your volunteer work, can you share what, what what's your what's your day, day job, job been or what is, what is my, it? What, my background is corporate public affairs. Okay. Uh, both community relations and some philanthropy, running a foundation, that sort of thing. Okay. Media relations, yeah. that sort of stuff. Uh, all of this blends after a while, yeah. and it gets. And, it, and I, I got to tell you, when you when you have these sort of global experiences, sometimes it's frustrating when you come back into the local community, and you see people, my opinion, arguing about the wrong things. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of wasted energy. Yeah. So, and mm -hmm. you also do a show on H Cam. Yeah. yeah, we do a little. It's called Business Matters, Matters. and we we interview people, interesting people. That's you know and. Again, you three are doing this, but there are fascinating people that do fascinating yes. things. Yes, all through Like recently, didn't you have the new executive director from Golden Pond on? Yes, yeah. 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 And we talk about, we don't talk about, we don't promote their business as much as we talk about their background. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. We interviewed, uh, we just did one recently, we interviewed Jim Cousins, the mm -hmm. station manager. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. No one's done that. Wow. Because mm -hmm. he's here. And, and actually the story of yeah. how 
H Camp yeah. came about yeah. and is a nonprofit. Exactly. It really, you know, has relationships with Verizon and Comcast. It's a, it's a story. Yeah, it is. And what it he's is. done for the high mm -hmm. school, amazing. Well, we're friends with the new, um, I say, the new Jim Cousins of the Framingham. Oh. Um, H Camp, the Framingham Public Access TV, and he's so admiring of Hopkinton. He had, no, you know, he knows we live here, but he just says you guys have a great public TV, and he wants to come and and meet Jim, and wow. you know, just yeah. to make that connection. Don't you want to scream about this stuff sometimes? I mean, yeah, it, yeah. So it's so hard to articulate to people because there's so many intangibles of just how fantastic our community is. It is really. A wonderful yeah. place and we have so many treasures and gems um, not only in physical plant but the people too absolutely um, we're really fortunate I so I know we've done some shout outs on our Facebook page and our e-newsletters about confidence beats because we have the, the rock star beat that's for real housewives and helps benefit you but I also wear the 26.2 foundation I do too I have it on today. Today. yeah Linda Waters gave it to me over a year ago with the connection of Hockington <laughs> and um, these are actually on the Confidence Bead websites mm -hmm. under the Beads for a Cause. You're able to celebrate Hopkinton and celebrate and help the 26.2 Foundation Absolutely. by getting this. Also check out the 26.2 Foundation's website. It's 26.2.org. We'll it's put a it up there. Website. Thank you. Because our time is running out. Our oh, time is, is running out. Message? Yes. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep doing what you're doing. And everybody, thank, thank you for being you. with us, Tim, so much. And thank Thanks, you, everybody, Tim. for joining us. You guys are right. I'm Dr. Jerry Goodman. And I'm Dr. John Mandeville. Age-related eye diseases such as cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration, and diabetic retinopathy affect nearly 37 million Americans. With an aging population and higher rates of conditions like diabetes, the number of visually impaired people is expected to increase substantially in the years ahead. While age may bring on vision disorders, many conditions are preventable, and everyone at any age should take steps to maintain good eye health. Here's what you can do. Get regular screenings to check for potential problems. Take care of your overall health, know your family history, and be alert to health and vision changes that could be signs of something serious. Wear eye protection when needed, at work, playing sports, or working at home with tools, including sunglasses to guard against damaging rays from the sun. For more information on eye health and protecting your vision, visit GetEyeSmart.org. Thank you.